Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. So just a couple of days ago, AMD released their five-year game plan for both their CPUs and GPUs, as well as the APUs, if you're into that kind of thing. And there's a couple of really cool pieces of news that I pulled out of this. Uh, first of all, next year, AMD is going to be introducing a 16-core APU with Greenland Integrated Graphics. And that is just incredible to me that they're packing that much into an APU. It's not going to win any performance awards, but if you're looking for a chip for a PC that cannot support discrete graphics, this is going to be an amazing choice. And I'm still going to stick with Intel through this, although there's some news on that in just a minute, because... Um, Intel just supports my workload better than AMD does, but this is looking like a better and better option when compared to Intel. Now, the second piece of news directly affects what I just said. In the next couple of years, AMD is going to be moving towards, they didn't say hyper-threaded. I know hyper-threading is kind of an Intel thing, but it sounds to me an awful lot like hyper-threading. Now, the reason that I prefer Intel over AMD is because Intel blows AMD out of the water in single thread speed. AMD can easily keep up with Intel on heavily multi-threaded tasks. But let's face it, in today's computing world, there's not a whole lot of things you do that are heavily multi-threaded. There's a couple of new, new games that support heavy multi-threading, uh, video editing, processing, and compiling pretty much workstation stuff. Your average gamer or your average uh, PC user is going to see more speed benefits out of an Intel chip, albeit at a slightly higher cost than out of an AMD chip. This is not talking about people who literally just get on and use their internet browser. Intel does better because of its high single thread speed. So what's going to happen with AMD is they're moving from uh, large numbers of cores which are all running a single thread and they use something called clustered multi-threading which is two CPU cores working together to best utilize their resources and what happens with this is you have two threads that run side by side at the same speed that are reasonably fast this works super well for the heavily multi-threaded stuff but the single cores are not able to run at the same speed as Intel cores because they have a lower transistor count. They save power and resources by lowering the transistor count. With the new AMD CPUs, they're going to use simultaneous multi-threading, which is each core working by itself to run one single thread at the maximum possible speed it can, and then utilizing the rest of that core with a second slower thread. They don't say it's hyper-threading, but to me that sounds an awful lot like hyper-threading. So what this is going to do is it's going to make AMD every bit as capable as Intel at crunching heavy single thread tasks and that's going to do wonders for their chips this is going to be what's going to make me look at amd again when this next generation of chips comes through and they're still going to be on the same architecture it's going to be x86 um, architecture or arm version 8 uh, both on 14 nanometer dies but this is going to make me take another look at Intel or at AMD. I haven't for a long time because Intel just suits my needs better. But if they can pull this off and if it is delivering what they promise, this is going to put them back in the game with Intel. One other thing to note, uh, in 2017, that is two years from now, AMD plans to introduce a high-performance computing APU or HPC. It is a single chip that has a TDP of 300 watts, and it is basically an extremely high-performance APU. And one of the things that they're going to be using to pull this off is the higher bandwidth memory that's going to be coming. Um, it's stacked high bandwidth memory. I'm not sure how far that is out from consumer production, but apparently it's about nine times as fast as the graphics DDR5 memory 
and 128 times faster than DDR3. So that's going to give them the bandwidth they need to put 16 cores and graphics on the same chip and still have enough memory bandwidth to feed it all, which is quite an impressive feat if I do say so myself. But anyway, just some really cool news coming out of AMD. I was happy to hear it. I'm glad that there is finally going to be a direct competitor with Intel in this area. And uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what comes of it. Hopefully they can stick to their game plan. They'll deliver a really good product on time and we'll be able to take a look at it. All right, that's going to wrap up this video. Like if you liked it, thumbs down if you disliked it, and please comment below on any way that I can improve these new spots. This is something new that I'm doing, as I mentioned in the previous ones, and it's an area where I'd love to expand. So just let me know what you think, and I will see you guys in the next video.